evening and welcome to our special wrap of the Auto Expo's first day here at Greater Noida's India Expo Mart. The uh, big news, is, of course, around all the big unveils and uh, the product launches that we've seen. Some that were expected to happen, some that were surprises and some twists and turns with announcements from all the players. This is, of course, part of our comprehensive coverage of the Auto Expo that we're going to bring you right through this week on the NDTV network and on our website carandbike.com. Let's get started with the way the day started for us. The very first press conference and the first unveil came from the market leader Maruti Suzuki with the new Vitara Brezza. This is the uh, sub 4 meter subcompact SUV that Maruti uh, was expected to have actually launched into the market at the expo, but it was just an unveil. We actually have the market launch coming up only in March. That's when we'll have prices for now. The car comes in with a 1.3 litre diesel engine, but Maruti says that a petrol and even an automatic will follow later. It's the new Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza, certainly one of the most hot and anticipated products at the Auto Expo this year and is offered in a whole lot of colours, lots of customization options, all that very new for Maruti. It will be sold through the entire dealer network, so it's not Nexa only like the Baleno or the S-Cross and uh, smartly done design because when you look at the car it doesn't look like a sub 4 meter product it looks nice and ample has all the SUV proportions you can think of and also has a 198 millimeter ground clearance a 2500 millimeter wheelbase which means pretty decent on cabin size as well and then come around to the back and you will get to see that uh, the styling here has been done almost in keeping with the Vitara family so again a nice hark back to the SUV typical SUV styling that you see from Suzuki worldwide. The Vitara Brezza also has a reasonable boot, 328 litres and that's going to be again a bit of a USP because take a look at that, it's nice and ample and uh, I think a lot of buyers will like that. Pricing, well we'll only know all that uh, possibly sometime in uh, March, the second half of March because that's when the car will make its market debut. We'll only have the diesel at the start like I said and uh, you will have a petrol and an automatic that comes later on in the year. The customization options, you can see the contrast two-tone roof on this one. There's also going to be stickers and decals and lots of options. All very new territory for Maruti Suzuki, for sure. When it comes to um, the kind of volume potential you see, I'm not going to ask you how many are you going to sell every month, but uh, because I'm sure you'll sell a lot. <laughs> I, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you do, obviously. You, yeah, you do see a lot. Yeah, expectation there. Uh, but, uh, at least that as far as we're preparing a uh, new model, we exhibit over the 5,000 per month, but uh, I explain I, I this model for the ma more uh, bigger number. More than 5,000. Yeah. Maruti Suzuki is looking to enter a new segment there with the Vitara Brezza, and it's a new segment that Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India wants to create with its new product called the Navi. Navi, of course, is Hindi for new, and that's exactly what Honda is going after with this, well, you want to call it a mini motorcycle or a new kind of bike. It's uh, based on the Activa, it also shares the engine with the Activa and uh, which is why Honda believes that it will attract a whole wide variety of buyers. There are two reasons for it. One is the versatility, it says the product has on board and which is why you'll have male and female buyers. And the second is the price tag, 39,500 rupees is fairly attractive. There are three versions of the Navi, if you will, the street, the adventure and the off-road version which means there's plenty of customization possible as well. Honda's rival TVS is also very active here at the Expo. Three new exciting concepts being shown by the uh, two-wheeler maker. The N-Torque 210 is a 210cc touring scooter, so a nice big scooter and an ample uh, engine there as well. We hope this makes it to production, though no commitment on that from TVS. The company recently launched the Apache 200 RTR 4V and now we're getting to see its racing version as a concept called the X21. Again, there isn't a launch plan that TVS wants to announce on this. And then finally, the one that we've all been waiting for, more details emerging now on what will eventually end up being the BMW G310R. That's, uh, remember, part of the partnership that TVS has with BMW, the shared platform bike. Being shown here as a concept, the TVS Akula 310 race spec. It has a carbon fiber frame, but it's the naked version that will, of course, launch as that BMW production model. All eyes are on the BMW, the bike that you're developing. This is the platform that you're building it on. Uh, take us through in terms of what else can we expect and when can we expect that? Short to the presentation, I mean, when uh, close to the launch, I'll announce much more about that product. But at this point of time, please enjoy this concept. They are great. 
A huge pavilion from the country's second largest car maker, Hyundai. We've had, of course, the market debut now of the Tucson SUV. It's a full-size SUV that will take on the Toyota Fortuner and the Ford Endeavor when it launches. Hyundai, of course, seeing a big gap for SUVs in its current portfolio. Between the Creta and the Santa Fe is where the Tucson will fit in, and you'll have several variants of that. And then following that, next year, we'll probably get to see a production version of its concept car, which is currently just being termed the HND 14. It is a car that will take on the Ford EcoSport, the new Tata Nexon, and the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza. Today, we also unveiled uh, the performance premium SUV, the Hyundai Tucson, which is the global product of ours. And we are fortunate to bring this product, right, and happy to bring this product to Indian market. A lot of people are asking about it, I know, and there, yes. was, a, there, was, there was already a knowledge that it's coming, and now that it's been unveiled here, you'll be, you'll be inundated with when are you launching it questions. I mean, not just from us, but even from uh, potential customers. Yes, there has been an increased inquiry levels, right, at our dealerships, right, and also from the media friends, from the public at large, right, in terms of our websites, it's coming in in terms of feedbacks, asking for the product. So and yes, this year, sooner or later, that, that's basically uh, this will be I'm this going. year. I think surprise <laughs> is part of Hyundai's DNA, right? Right. Uh, yes. Uh, nowhere in uh, in the media or in where anywhere there was a speculation or there was information that Hyundai would be bringing in another SUV, right? And that to Hyundai Tucson between the the Creta as well as the Santa Fe. But we surprised the market. I think uh, flexibility, right? Strong innovation is our DNA, and that's what exactly we would like to. Yes. Uh, what we have also observed is that below Creta, right, uh, there is also a white space for an SUV. But that market is yet to mature in terms of volumes. Mm. What we believe is that that market would mature in a couple of years. So for that, we have already brought in a concept car, HND 14, which is going to be the entry SUV or the small SUV. That will then fulfill the entire product range so or the product something. requirement. Yeah. So we will have what we call exactly is, is four SUVs, entry or small SUV, the HND 14, which is at the concept stage right now, followed by the Creta, then the Tucson, and then the Santa Fe. So four SUVs for the Indian market, in addition to the compact and the sedan uh, products that we have, so that we can, can continue to to sustain our leadership position by growing in the marketplace. Now besides all these fancy cars and bikes, we also get the chance to meet some interesting people always at the Auto Expo and a whole lot of celebrities do drop in. We've had a few celebrity sightings today and managed to also get some face time with Ranbir Kapoor when we had a Google Hangout with him. Right after that, I had the chance to speak with him. So here's a little excerpt of that chat. Take a look at that, take a short break and join us right after. Auto Expo time in Delhi and it's also a time when we get to hang out with uh, Ranbir Kapoor. Ranbir, thanks for speaking to us and uh, good to have you here at the Expo again. Um, nice to be back. Absolutely, Sid. Uh, you know, it's, it's a wonderful platform, you know, where uh, uh, companies from all over the world showcase their products, uh, you know, push the boundaries of innovation, see competition. Of course, this is my second year with Hero. Uh, like I mentioned to you, it's, it's like the Cannes Film Festival for a movie, you know, yeah. uh, especially for automobiles and motorcycles. So really glad and happy and proud to be here. The uh, kind of you know buzz around the the brand that we've seen of late. We've done a Google Hangout now. Is it nice to be sort of part of that? You kind of catch that wave as well. Absolutely, and I think we also did a really interesting uh, innovation a uh, uh, couple of months back. You, me, and uh, you know all the bikes. Uh, so I think Hero al always does that. You know, it's not just about signing me as a brand ambassador and let's just shoot an ad film. You know, it's all about really understanding what the company believes in. Uh, you know, how they're doing it. Uh, you know, the especially the eco-friendly manner that they go about it. The new products. Uh, so yeah, you know, and I think it's, it's a great fit, you know, it's something that uh, I kind of can borrow and live my life by, you know, their ideologies. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. One thing that caught a lot of people's attention, you work with all the brands, it always gets attention, but um, with some of the campaigns you've done with both Hero and even with Renault now, and the Rahman song and in in that uh, particular uh, ad has really caught on. Is it nice to be recognized for that too? <laughs> Absolutely, you know, to be honest, uh, uh, Sid, people know me more by my brand endorsements than uh, my movies because when they watch television it reaches such you know a large demographic of people but when you see a movie it's only a particular kind of 
you know, crowd goes and sees that film. Uh, but I remember, you know, especially my first three years, people knew me as this Pepsi role, uh, you know, model more than, you know, my two films that I had done in my career. So yes, uh, you know, certain brands, certain brands like Hero, Pepsi, Reno, you know, they have such a large reach. Uh, uh, so it really reaches you out to more people than even a movie. Okay, quick word on your upcoming movies. Uh, well, I have Jagga Jashus, which is going on since so many years. You keep asking me that. I keep <laughs> saying the same thing. But it should be out in uh, should next, be a fun movie this too, summer. Though. Yes, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a really exciting adventure film. I have Karan Johar's Ae Dil Hai Mushkil, which should be out in Diwali. And I have Ayan Mukherjee's uh, superhero film and uh, Raju Irani's biopic, Sanjay Dutt biopic. Busy year. Hopefully, like uh, like, oh, yeah, uh, would like it to be busy. Uh, you know, like we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, hoping that a lot of inspiration, uh, happiness and, and lots of work, you know, I mean, that's what really keeps us happy is when you're working. Uh, so I hope can, I can spend a lot of my year on set, uh, you know, working on good projects with a lot of inspiration and a lot of happiness and peace of mind. Inspiration, happiness, peace of mind. Wish you all of that in truckloads. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Man. Tata Motors, which uh, had a lot of anticipation around its stand as well because uh, things we saw as concepts the last expo were expected to come in as production vehicles and we have seen that. The Nexon and uh, also a concept shown at the Geneva Motor Show in 2015, the Hexa, both breaking cover here at the Auto Expo. The Hexa is a product that will take on the Mahindra XUV in the full-size SUV space. We're expecting competitive pricing from Tata Motors when it does launch later in the year. And a similar sort of a strategy in terms of being competitive with the Nexon, which is the uh, small subcompact SUV, looking very stylish, getting a lot of uh, attention for its looks. And Tata Motors will be banking heavily on both these cars. Besides that, Tata will, of course, bank on the Zika, but you can't really call it that anymore, can you? The Zika will be renamed. This is a car we've already showed you here on the NDTV network. We've already reviewed it as well. The market launch was expected later in February. It has now been pushed to either the last week of March or the beginning of April because Tata Motors needs to rebrand the car. It was too early or too soon for Tata to bring that new brand to the Auto Expo. So the car that's here on the stand at Tata still carries the Zika name. The reason, of course, is because of the Zika virus, which has uh, taken control of Central America. Tata didn't want some of that negative uh, publicity around that deadly virus to affect the prospects of this new car, and which is where that rebranding will now take place. Back to some two-wheeled action and we had a new version of the Ray Z from Yamaha. It's a new 110cc scooter, a variant being called the Cygnus Ray Z, even more so targeted now at the male buyer. Besides that, you had another new scooter from Suzuki as well. This is the new generation of the popular Access with the 125cc engine. It is an updated engine and of course you have different new looks as well coming in with that new scooter. Hero for its part showed off an electric scooter concept called the Duet E. But Hero also had three other concepts that caught our eye. The uh, Splendor iSmart 110, which is the uh, new version of the Splendor iSmart with a torque on demand engine. The Extreme 200S, which is the naked sports bike that uh, is showing a bit of a new design direction from Hero perhaps. But the one that really does show that in ample, ample terms is the XF3R, the Street Fighter design concept that uh, looks very well finished has some great proportions and we certainly hope to see something like that coming from Hero. Meanwhile, Volkswagen already began with a new car coming on the eve of the Expo. That was yesterday with the Amio subcompact sub 4 meter car, which is based on the Vento. But today it was the turn to, uh, for us to get to see the Tiguan. That's the premium SUV that will drive in to take on the likes of the Fortuna. And it will only happen in the second half of this year, perhaps closer to the end of the year, says Volkswagen. The Tiguan certainly looking very formidable and there will be a seven-seater version that you can expect here in India. But besides that, remember Volkswagen having to uh, battle some of the perception issues ever since the diesel emissions scandal broke in the United States. The management here talking about how it's dealing with that. Uh, your brand also has taken a hit because of the overall diesel engine scandal that happened in Europe. Uh, take us through how you're convincing customers here in India that all is okay. Yeah, well, generally we had a, a period of uncertainty in India in the last year where we needed to clarify with the authorities in collaboration uh, where do we stand and finally we, we are at that clean position that says we are fully compliant with the Indian emission regulations. That's where we start from with 
However, it's very clear. I mean, we as a German brand, people would not have expected things that had impacted the US <coughs> or Europe would have happened. So what we do is, and we declared that very early, to voluntarily recall all our diesel cars and upgrade them in the same way as we do that in Germany. And uh, this will happen starting uh, middle of half year one and we'll go through a staggered way and reach all the 200,000 Volkswagen customers. This is one opportunity to get in touch with them, upgrade their vehicle, mostly it's a software upgrade, and then you know get them on the same basis as anybody else in Europe. This is how we, I think we can win back the trust and uh, gain again what we had lost potentially. Sure. It's always nice when the Auto Expo has a new brand entry. We had a few of those last time around and this time it is the turn of the Jeep brand. One we've been waiting for for several years now. Finally, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles bringing in its Jeep brand. There will be two vehicles launched in the uh, coming months. That's the Wrangler and uh, the Grand Cherokee. Both flagship products for Jeep worldwide. But the bigger news from Jeep is the fact that uh, after they've established the brand here in India and uh, you've seen these two vehicles being on sale for a few months, in early 2017, we'll get the locally made compact SUV. That's going to be the big volumes product for Jeep to really establish itself here in India. It's wonderful to have the brand in. Uh, we've been talking about it for some time. I know there have been some delays, but um, but it's good to, to sort of break into the Indian market now. Yes, very important uh, for us and, and great timing. You know, the, uh, the Jeep brand just uh, finished its best year ever on 1.2 million units uh, here around the globe uh, in 2015. We are kicked off our 75th anniversary and, um, and now we're here in, uh, uh, in India announcing our uh, uh, arrival to this market. So a lot of significant milestones in the last few days uh, for, uh, for Jeep and, uh, and it's important for us to be here because there's lots of uh, growth opportunity and lots of customers that uh, they're looking forward to us to be here. So it's, uh, it's good to finally be here in India. General Motors also trying to come out of uh, the situation it finds itself in, wants bigger volumes in India in the long term has uh, said that the Spin MPV will only arrive in 2017, but along with it, there will be another new car that was shown here for the first time, the Essentia, which is a beat-based subcompact, sub four-meter sedan. It is a car that will take on some mighty rivals like uh, the Honda Amaze, the Maruti Suzuki Swift Desire, and uh, no doubt the uh, Hyundai Accent as well. The Essentia will also launch only in the first half of 2017 though, says GM. Honda, in the meanwhile, uh, has been showing off its entire portfolio of products here, but also launching the uh, BRV. This is again an unveil and not a market launch. The car will arrive only in a few days from now. So joining us here at the studio from the Auto Expo is Janeshwar Sen, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Honda Cars. First of all, thank you so much for joining us here at thank the studio. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, great BRV unveil that you guys happened. Um, it's only the unveil. That's right. Uh, when do we see the product and what kind of positioning are you looking at for the BRV given the kind of excitement that that segment offers? The unveiling happened today uh, as you saw and uh, we expect to launch it sometime in summer uh, this, this year. Uh, as far as the vehicle is concerned, it's a crossover utility vehicle and we are very confident that it will offer new value to our customers. Uh, as you saw, it's a pretty bold and exciting looking vehicle from the outside. Sure. It's got very premium interiors. At the same time, it's got a lot of uh, utility and versatility. It's got three rows of seats. And uh, so it's a real uh, you know, all-rounder, I would say. Sure. And that's how I guess uh, our customers would also look at it. And yes, the Auto Expo is always known for its fair share of celebrities. We've had uh, some of the Bollywood starlets here earlier this morning. You have already had a chance to see my chat with Ranbir Kapoor, but uh, the one I've saved up for the end is the one that was always exciting. The uh, special conversation with uh, none other than Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. One of the most high-profile visitors here at the Expo, you can see 